Christmas in the light of the world. Dear friends, you might be getting ready to celebrate Christmas, right? Today, let us see if major Christmas stories and their characters that we have ingrained in our minds and the birth of Christ mentioned in the Bible are the same. Approximately 2000 years back from now, in the small town of Bethlehem in Judea, Jesus, the savior of the world, was born. His birth was not a normal birth. Behind his birth there was a specific plan and purpose of the almighty God. We are telling this story with the intention of throwing some light into what happened. For that, let us go back into the first pages of the history of mankind. Approximately 6000 years ago, God created man in his image. God gave him authority over the earth and all other creation. But the first parents on earth, Adam and Eve, fell into the trap of Satan and disobeyed God and sinned. So, man became a sinner and lost the glory they had. God, who had no sin, now could not dwell with man like he did before. But he was not willing to forsake man forever. The all-knowing God in his righteousness made a solution and he decided a time for that. As time went by, man indulged in wickedness more and more. But a few walked in the ways of God. Enoch and Noah are two among them. The wages of sin, which was death, ruled over man. God, seeing that his enemy the devil was trying to get man to sin, decided to choose first Abraham and then the nation of Israel through him to reveal his glory to the world. God wanted all the nations of the world to come to him, seeing that the God of Israel was the true God. But both Israel and the world alike forsook this God who is not visible and served other idols which were made by their own hands. Along with this, they worshiped the stars of the heavens, animals and creeping things. But God, who was compassionate and merciful, decided to reveal the salvation that he had stored up for mankind. He revealed this to our fathers by the prophets bit by bit. and also through psalms and through the books of Moses for God won't do anything without revealing it to his servants right through all of them he decreed that he would send a savior to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death but the birth of this savior was different he was not born of man's will but of a virgin through the spirit of the lord god also told the place of his birth That was Bethlehem in Judea. When the appointed time came, God sent his angel Gabriel to the virgin Mary who lived in Nazareth of Galilee. Now Mary was engaged to Joseph who was in the lineage of David. The angel announced God's will to her. Mary understood that God had chosen her to carry the son of God Almighty. Mary, who was expecting the redeemer of Israel, surrendered herself to God's will without hesitation, and she conceived through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, knowing that Mary was pregnant before their marriage, decided to divorce her quietly. But the angel of the Lord came to him in a dream and told him the truth. He did not disobey the heavenly vision and took Mary as his wife. In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and Mary gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger. because there was no room for them in the inn the people whom god chose first to inform the world about this birth were a few shepherds in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night an angel of the lord appeared to them and the glory of the lord shone around them and he informed them about the joy of the world when the angels had left them the shepherds decided to go to bethlehem and see for themselves what happened So they hurried off and found the baby lying in a manger as they were told. They explained their experiences to others and all who heard it were amazed. 
According to the Jewish law, on the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. After a few days, Joseph and Mary took Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated. There was Simeon and prophetess Anna. Both of them were in their old age, and they spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. They announced that Jesus was the Savior of the world. At that time, Herod was ruling over Judea. Now, wise men from the east had seen God's star in the east, and so came to Herod and asked where the king of the Jews was born. When Herod heard that a new king was born who could possibly challenge his reign, Herod was frightened. Soon he summoned all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law and asked them where the Christ was to be born. Being well versed in the scriptures, they revealed he was to be born in Bethlehem in Judea. Then Herod called the wise men secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, and he told them to inform him as soon as they find the child. So they went and saw the child, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts. But being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Thus, not only in Judea, but also in the east, the news of the Saviour's birth spread. Jesus was born to save us from our sins. But would the redemption of the world be possible only with the birth of Jesus? No, never. So, fulfilling the scripture that without the shedding of blood there is no forgiveness of sins, God made salvation possible for us by pouring out his own blood on Calvary till the last drop. In this time when the world is celebrating Christmas, Instead of birthing Jesus in a manger, let us birth him in our hearts. The Christmas trees and Santa Claus that are prominent in our Christmas celebrations today are meaningless things that have come in the course of time. These things have no connection with the real story of Christmas. The imaginary character Santa Claus, who comes to our house every year with gifts, does not have any connection to the Jesus Christ in the Bible. The gift Jesus gave us is his own life. The greatest gift that we can give to the one who gave his life for us is opening our heart to him. My dear friends, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. So, instead of waiting for the next Christmas or Santa Claus, let us leave godless myths and the old wife's tales which are against the true word of God and train ourselves to be godly. And may God Almighty help us do that. God bless you.